Hey guys, Dr. Bobby Safransky here. We just dug in on a little bit about my life, talking about health, wellness, chiropractic, how I work on and adjust animals as well. I hope you really enjoy it and get something out of it. Dr. Bobby Safransky. Matt. Awesome, awesome. Really, really excited to have you on the show. Appreciate it, man. Been wanting to have you on since I started this. Yeah, we've talked about it a few times. We have. Yeah. Here it is. Here it what is. you do is so interesting to me. Like, I love it, right? You're a chiropractor, you got a specialty, right? You adjust animals, horses, we'll get into that. Yeah. Um, a lot of cool things going on. So let's start with this. Okay. Tell me where it all started, how you got into health and fitness and, and being a chiropractor and where, you, where you're going now with the, the horse adjustments. Okay. Go back to the beginning. Back to the beginning. So born in Connecticut, 1985, uh, moved down here when I was two. Um, so I guess I'm a de facto Floridian. Um, You've been here long enough. You're actually, enough. you're like an original. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, can't claim local, but you know, or, um, What's the word that they use? Uh, I don't know. Whatever. But I native. can't claim that. Native. native. I'm thinking that's of it as you're like, it, what's the word it. he's looking for? Native. <laughs> you're a native. Um, I can't claim that because I wasn't born here, yep. but might as well. Um, so grew up in Loxahatchee, uh, Florida. Uh, grew up outside uh, baseball, riding dirt bikes, four wheelers, playing in the mud, jumping bikes, building, rent, you know, rural city stuff, yeah, playing yeah. sports, hanging out with friends, um, graduated high school and went to community college, um, went to Santa Fe Community College in Gainesville and I started working, uh, you know, when I was 15, I got my first job. Doing what? Uh, I was a bus boy. Okay. A local, uh, I think it was called Sopranos, little Italian restaurant. Of course, is it? On North Lake. That's a great yeah. first job. It is. It's actually a great. I, I actually told my girlfriend this at uh, dinner the other night that I think everyone should either work in retail or hospitality. Why? Because they need to learn how to interact with people. Service. Service. Yep. And understand how to make a dollar. That's right. Right. I grew up, my mom's a nurse for 40 years this year. My dad's a classically trained Italian chef from Johnson and Wales. Um, you know, they opened up a restaurant, sold it. Um, and then since then, my dad's been a butcher. My dad works in construction. Right now he's working lake management, doing, you know, spraying for algae and maintaining the quality of water uh, throughout Florida with a, a, a friend of mine's company. And everything that I've learned from day one was you got to work. Everything requires work. And it's, you saw it with your parents. And I saw it with Both my parents. Of them. The cars broke down. We had to work to fix them. The water heater broke. We had to learn how to fix it. There was no alternative. No alternative, right? Like you, Not that you can't afford someone to pay it, but you should understand how to fix it. And if you don't know how to fix it, while somebody's fixing it, learn. So- Like, don't be helpless. Exactly, kind of what I'm hearing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Don't be helpless and, you know, be able to be your own man almost. And I took that to community college with me, all of that stuff. You know, I built my first car with my father. Um, we started when I was 14. And by the time I was 16, I had a 1979 Camaro. No kidding. Tell me you still have it. I don't, but it, <laughs> is on, it is on my list of things yeah. to find and rebuild yeah. and have. Find that car. I, I, I'm trying. I'm going to do a VIN search sometime soon. Um, Could you imagine if you found that car again? Oh, man. I, I don't even know what it would look like. I, but Just I the could, fact that you built it with your dad. Like, yeah. But you got I, the car back. I could probably crawl under there and say, I remember riveting that. Right. I, I did that. Is, right. But it was such a cool experience. And then from there, I learned how to work on cars, work with my hands, change my own oil, tires, brakes, maintain the maintenance on my vehicles. And that translated to like later when I was in chiropractic school, that's how my friend and I earned money as we fixed our friends and classmates' cars. Really? We would send them to the dealership. Hey, go see what's wrong with your car, get a parts list, 
then we'd send them to the parts store and then we would fix, and the fix car. it. Yeah. But my first job in college. Wait, I, wait, did you work all through high school? I worked all through high school and worked all through college. Okay. So you did a, you were a bus boy when you were 15, you said? 15. I, I was basically a bus boy until I moved to college. Did you work like every day after school? Um, no, every day after school. I, I probably worked four days a week, five okay. days a week, maybe four days a week. Okay. I, I don't know because I was playing sports. Mm -hmm. Um, I was still active. I was actually a cheerleader in high school. So, we had practice, we had games, we had responsibilities for that. So when I would make my schedule around school and cheerleading, I would work. What sport did you play? I played baseball you did. a lot growing okay. up. Yeah. Okay. We were a big baseball family. My, my little brother was significantly better than me, but um, we just still played. And it was fun. We grew up, met a lot of friends, a lot of lifelong friends that I still keep in touch with um through sports and growing up but it was just one of those things that you did as a kid and yeah you just do it you just it's, do it's it part of the program right so the work and the work ethic like that's really yeah. you got my attention with that yeah you know it's um there's a common theme that i hear among a lot of people that i speak to mm -hmm. that come up a certain way and reach certain levels you know sure. in life and we'll get to that with you but that work ethic is you, without the work ethic like where do you go you're always think, expecting somebody else to give you something. Yeah. I, which goes I, nowhere. I, exactly. I think in life and in business and in day-to-day -day communications, if you go into something expecting something of someone without putting in the work yourself, you're not helping yourself at all. So everything I go into, it's you know, this podcast. Well, what does Matt talk about? Well, let me listen to the ones that he's put out. I've listened to probably eight of your podcasts. Right? That was you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got you. <laughs> but like, I'm not just going to show up to something not knowing. I'm right. not going to show right. up with no education on it. <clears throat> I'm not going to show up and just expect you to do it for me. Yeah. I'm going to So you're, you're prepared. Mm -hmm. You're prepared. So that's really interesting. By the way, the background that your parents have, I mean, that you know, your mom's 40 years as a nurse, your dad's done some really cool things, so they prepare. Yeah. If you think about what they're doing, they're really prepared. Well, not you know, only they, that, they had a, a goal in life. Yeah, right? what was it? To raise a, a family and to raise two quality young men. Yeah. Right? And they succeeded in that, yeah. I think. And that goal was what they were working towards the entire time, but they knew that they had to do that through work. A and I picked up on that pretty damn quick. And it's just like the socialization, like that's just what it was, you right. know? It's like, that's just normal for you guys. Yeah. It, you know? it, it, watching them, you know, in, in, in America, there's so much divorce that happens. I'm very blessed that my parents have been together almost 40 years and they're still together. That's the story right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bring them on. What's the secret? <laughs> yeah. My dad will tell you. Just listen to her. Yeah. And uh, he's like, it. he's like, tune her out or do what she says. Or both. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, th they just worked so well as a cohesive unit yeah. that it functioned. And you could see that if there was a problem, they would break it down together, together and solve it. OK, what do we need to do? How do we need to do that? What needs to happen for us to get there? And watching them execute that every day. Hey, Peter and Bobby have to go to baseball practice. One's here, one's there. Okay, I'm coming from this place. You're coming from that. You take him, I'll take him. You have a very grounded energy. And since I've met you, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's been there. And now I understand why. It's just a... I think. I, th I think so too. But, uh, you know, coming from a a place and I tell my patients this you have to meet people where they're at right if oh I have the worst pain of my life okay how can I help okay tell me about it let's fix it you do this this and this or if somebody comes in and part of my job sometimes is just being a therapist right yeah, yeah. Is sitting down and listening to people's lives and stories like uh, that's just where they're at today. Meet them yeah. where they're at. 
And yeah. when you do that, you get that sense of wholesomeness, that groundedness, that um, this person person actually gives a shit about me kind of feeling. And it's a it's a good feeling to have and to hear when people tell you, I really appreciate you listening to me. I feel like you actually care. It's, it's like, I do. I don't meet anybody in life expecting to brush them to the side, like next, next person. I, I've told people in the past, like, you don't meet people in life to make enemies. Like I'm meeting people in life to make a network. So if I pick up a phone and I say, man, I need an answer to this question, who can I call? Or I know someone that needs help with something. I can call this person and put them in touch. Or I'm here in New Mexico. Do I know anybody in New Mexico? Where can I go kind of deal? Like I never, I never meet people to not have them in my life or to- There's a purpose. Me. There's yeah. a purpose. It's very intentional. Right? It is. But like, if you go through life with intention, you're going to have a very fulfilling life. That's gold right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you just go through life and go through the motions and say, oh, what's today going to bring me? Like, you're just kind of setting yourself up for failure. So you got, so now you're through high school. You're, you, went, you went to college. And so tell me about, take me through that and then to what led you to, you know, to be a chiropractor. So the road to being a chiropractor was actually kind of bumpy. Um, community college, you know, you go to community college for an associate's degree, not a bachelor's degree. So I set out for a two year degree. It took me four years to earn it because I worked. <laughs> right, right. It wasn't that I, right. I partied. It wasn't that that I just wasn't a great like test taker ever. Yeah. And I'm still not. But. I had to take prerequisite classes. Then I had to take the basic level college classes. And so then you didn't I, do good in, in, in school, in, in high school. I mean, I was, I, I think I was like a 3.0 student. Oh, that's pretty good. Sure. But it was like the bottom 50% of my class. You would at a 3.0, you were in the bottom half of the class. Pretty much. That's, that's unfair because that's a smart <laughs> class. <laughs> right. <laughs> but still like I, I've never been the academic. I've always been the guy that yeah. has to work and learn. You're hands on. Hands on, yeah, big yeah, time. Yeah. In, I can in, relate to that. I understand what you mean. In chiropractic school, they the first thing that we did was they put us in like this little overnight retreat where we just kind of all meet and they you get to find out about yourself. And one of the things that they teach you, they give you a test on how you learn. And I learned then that I was a kinesthetic learner. So I learned with my hands. Interesting. So from there they give you the tools to help like build yourself through that medium of learning. So how, they teach you how to, how, to, how to learn so that you're actually your strengths, learning properly. Correct. Wow. They you're should do that with you're every going kid, to need everybody. to read that chapter or you're going to need to write this stuff out or you're going to have to learn that better in lab kind of stuff. And if I would have known that back in high school, I probably would have done better. Yeah, grammar, I sure. didn't care about grammar, you know. Uh, I had to learn all of that stuff in my first two years of college. And then I got my associate's degree. And then I applied to the University of Florida and I got in. I transferred into community from community college. And that was like the proudest day of my life. And then I get a phone call from my advisor. Hey, come check, come to my office. We got to talk about some stuff. Cool. <laughs> I'm in, well, whatever. And before I even took a class, they brought me in and said, hey, you know, you dropped a class here and you were supposed to have that. So by definition, you're not transferring with an associate's degree, you're transferring without. That's not a big deal. We can just have you take an extra class and it's and not you're good. And right. you're good. Right. Oh, thank Is that God. What you, did? you know, that's what I did. But the paperwork wasn't done on their end. So when that all came back around at the end of the semester, um, or about halfway through, I was deemed a non-degree seeking student. So the classes didn't count towards my GPA. I paid for the classes so I could attend them and learn, but I wasn't seeking any degree. And my understanding of that was, I don't have to drop any classes. I don't have to do right. I can just do whatever and it's not gonna hurt me because that's what I was told. And that's lesson one, always 
look into it for yourself. <laughs> that's right? right. That's right. Don't trust anybody else to do the work for you. And um, that wasn't the case because that advisor who told me that got transferred, and the lady whose class I failed was now my advisor. Ooh. And I was told after the semester ended and reapplying and just trying to figure out why the hell I wasn't getting back into school and I wasn't getting admitted and nothing was happening that she told me, you have to get it through your head that you are not University of Florida material. Really? If you don't get that through your head, you should remember this phrase. Do you want fries with that? Who said this to you? My advisor in college. That's She said, straight up is telling you that you're not going to make, you're not good enough. That I wasn't good enough. I took that to heart. I went back to community college. I changed my degree and I, I was applying to just get into the University of Florida at first just to get a degree. And at this point, I made it my mission to get back in and to prove somebody wrong. So I changed my degree from what was the College of Agriculture, which I was going to use to do journalism at the time. And I changed that to business, which was a harder school to get into. And I took business classes, business calc, business stats, business management, and that's hard stuff. It's not easy. And as the, as a learner, like the way you described yourself, that's like, yeah, you, you threw yourself into something difficult. Yeah. And it wasn't something I'm particularly, was particularly good at either. <laughs> yeah. And guess what? I got back into the University of Florida in the business school and I graduated with a business degree. And the first email I sent was to her was saying, thank you. You carry that all those years. Absolutely. And, and you still remember it. <laughs> and then I did it again yeah. when I graduated chiropractic school with a doctorate. Just, you sent her something again? Yep. Just a reminder. Thanks. Thanks for pushing me. You know, you and, really did turn it into a positive though. Like you weren't holding on to it in a, like in a, in a grudge kind of way. No, because there's no, it's important to, to just be like, I don't want people to think that we're talking about, I was being fueled by being angry or by holding a grudge. No. Cause that's not what I hear you or even feel you saying, mm -hmm. but it is important to point out that like somebody told you, you can't do something and you proved to yourself that you could. Correct. That's what you're saying. Yeah. I don't think there's any um, value in holding grudges. Mm. I really don't. I listen to a lot of podcasts, I read a lot of books, and it's not healthy to sit there and harp on the past and to sit there and say, well, that was your fault. Is it really her fault? Because I wasn't the one that didn't go to class. I wasn't the one that showed up and didn't take tests because I thought that I didn't have to be there. I didn't know I had to be there. And that was on me. So I took that and I said, you know what? I'm gonna change this and I'm going to hold myself accountable because I'm the only one who can hold myself accountable. I'm not going to sit there and look at someone and cry in front of them and say, hey, you told me this, but like I should have looked it up. So I used that as motivation and I kept it in the back of my head and clearly I'm still keeping it in the back of my head because it pushes me. Yeah, yeah. And I, I have no ill will towards her. I just said thank you. For sure. Right? There's a common theme too because now you're we're talking about, like I hear you talking about what was driving you and what kept you going, but you saw the importance of being prepared mm -hmm. when you watched your parents. Yep and teamwork when you watch your parents and not being helpless, yep. right? So here it's, it's coming back. Like yep. it's just part of you. It's part of your DNA. And you, that, you really just were like, screw it. I'm not going to, I'll, I'll, I'll get it done. Yeah. That's, that's what you knew. Yeah. When I was in, when I first moved to college in Gainesville, I lived with my mom's cousin and we used to watch TV on Friday nights, we watch football, get ready for football games on Saturday. And he would always turn on the University of Florida news channel. He goes, am I going to see you on there one day? I said, nah, I'll be on the ABC station. Right, right, right. And I did work for an ABC news affiliate in college as part of, you know, one of the jobs I had. And I did end up going on TV and I did show him and prove him wrong. So I guess there might be something subconscious in my head that I do that, but whatever. It With whatever me. drives you to a positive place. Right. You know? Right. Um, well, I want to skip 
Right. So let's, let's take me toward to to. So you have a degree in business. Mm-hmm. So which will be helpful if you ever go into your own business. Sure. But somewhere in there, you just you, you went to chiropractic school. Yeah. We're close. Yeah, we're 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 getting there, right? And um, when I was at UF, when I finally got in and I was there, I was a cheerleader. And I did that in high school and I love doing it because man, it's just positive, it's fun, it's challenging. So I hurt my back and I went to the athletic trainer, I went to the PT, I did massage therapy, I did every single modality in the training room and it still hurt. And I'd been adjusted my whole life, my mom's other cousin, was a chiropractor and I never thought of it. They said, you know what? Send him to team doctor. All right. Send me to team doctor. Three visits. My back was better. Don't remember what it was. I just know that he adjusted me and it worked. And I remember sitting, studying for a test in the library, sitting there saying, what the hell am I going to do with a business degree? I don't want to sell insurance. I don't want to do, I don't even know what I want to do. I just know I need to finish this. And then I started looking in chiropractic school. What do I need to do? I need to take bio one, bio two, chem one, chem two, organic chemistry, all stuff I've never taken before. Yeah. Right. Hard stuff. Hard. Yeah. Hard stuff. And all right, let's do it. What can I get next semester? Signing up for classes next semester. All right. I got it. Physics next semester, I, or it was bio, biology one, chemistry one, and then physics was my, my last semester. I took physics once, dumbest thing I've ever done. But so I was taking my business classes and a science class each semester until I graduated. And then after I graduated, I finished the remaining science courses the following year at the community college. And then I moved to Dallas for chiropractic school. Got in. So it was because of that that experience <clears throat> that you had. Mm-hmm. Well, there was an impact to your life. Yeah. And boom, that was like, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. It was, it was pretty cool. Uh, it's funny how things find you. Like, it is. What am I going to do? And all of a sudden, this thing happens to you. Oh, I'm going to yeah. do that. It is. It, it's interesting. Um, you know, in, in school, they tell you, everybody has their own chiropractic story. How did you get into chiropractic? And it's a story like that. I had, I had ear infections when I was a kid. I had back pain. I had scoliosis. Whatever the case may be that people have a story. So you, all right. I wanted to go back to something that I wanted to establish that you went to chiropractic school and you're a mm-hmm. chiropractor before I ask you a question. So sure. a few minutes ago we were talking about, I know you weren't holding on to something, but it made me think about the connection between your emotions and and, and illness, your emotions and, and oh, yeah. um, pain in your body, you know? And, and so do you think that holding on to things, do you think that like when you got emotional things going on that it actually causes you to potentially be ill or have pain? Yeah. Uh, the simple answer is yes. It's just your opinion, by the way. There's no, I'm not asking well, you for, like, if, it's in a, if it's written in any medical no, journals. Or... In my opinion, and it's, you know, documented in science. Now tying emotion to pain, um, that's not really well documented, but you know, in chiropractic, I can we, confirm it's true. It is, <laughs> um, in chiropractic, we talk about the three T's that cause subluxation or misalignment in the, okay. in the, in the spinal column, thoughts, trauma, and toxins. Interesting. Toxins, okay. thoughts, negative thoughts cause negative stress reaction, negative stress hormones that causes inflammation that can cause a whole bunch of other cascade of things. Negativity right? is toxic. It very much in many is. ways. It very much it's contagious and toxic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. But what I've noticed in practice is that not only do people have emotion, like this pain causes this emotion, or when they think about this, they have whatever. But there's an emotional connection to pain that some people don't know how to let go of because they want to live by a diagnosis. They want to be diagnosed with something because they want something wrong with them. Oh, wow. It's like part of their identity. Correct. That's, that's deep. It is very deep yeah. and it's very challenging to get through to people because I'm here to help someone. 
I, I am not physically helping you. Yeah, sure. Sometimes I'm breaking down some muscle tissue. I'm adjusting you, but we're letting your body heal. I'm not healing you. Your body's healing, but you have to want it to heal. <laughs> if you don't want it to heal, it's not going to heal. It's like a resistance. Yep. That's an interesting, interesting then, point of that of that connection. And then there's another part of that connection Ooh, where the three T's you said. Yep. Say it again. Trauma, trauma, thoughts, and toxins. Okay, go ahead. The other interesting thing is is let's use the trauma for example. Uh, a car accident, very traumatic to people. They get PTSD from it. They have neck pain from it. Now they have emotions tied to pain. And when you go to help get them through it and they're getting through and getting better, those emotions will come out. I've had people cry on my table. Are you okay? Yes, it just feels good. And those emotions just come out. It's so connected. Very connected. So there's, you know, a lot of people like to say, oh, science, 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 but like, look with your eyes, touch with your hands, people, these people are getting better. I want to share something with you. Sure. I got to, I have to draw it though. Okay. I actually told this story yesterday with somebody I was interviewing, but they were not a chiropractor. They were a psychologist. Okay. And so there's a chiropractor that I used to go to in New Jersey. Okay. And th his approach was very much about like, um, don't just get adjusted, but like, what's going on? Like, what do you, what's, what's, what's happening in your life? When did the pain actually start in your shoulder? And yeah. Dial it back to like, what was going on at that time? Or a cold is coming on. Like, what was going on right around that time? So he, he had this thing in his office and it went like this. It went beliefs create thoughts. Thoughts create emotions. I'm going to show it to you. I got a bad hand. I should have been a doctor. And emotions create outcomes. So we would sit in his office and he'd be like, what, what is it that you're feeling? Okay, I'm feeling this. As far as the outcome, the outcome is I have pain in my shoulder. Well, what emotion are you feeling? And for me, I was feeling actually some fear about something for a couple months. And then he's like, okay, well, what are you thinking that's actually creating the emotion? And then he brought me back to, well, what's the belief? And the belief ended up being fear of not having enough money, fear of losing money. And I was like, oh my God. He goes, Okay, so what happens if this happens? Well, I can always get a job somewhere else. What happens if that happens? And in the end, it was like, well, I'm going to be fine. Like, none of this really matters. And it might sound hokey, but the pain went away pretty quickly. And this was three months of pain in my shoulder that um, I went and got the shots, the cortisone shots, mm -hmm. the orthopedic doctor, everything. Like, you're fine. We don't see anything. This happened, and it went away. Pretty I'll wild. never forget it. It's pretty wild. Never forget it. But yeah. this, he believed that. Now, I know it's definitely an extreme belief uh, for a doctor, but sure. um, if, it if made you, sense. If it makes sense, it makes you know? sense. Right? So that's why I ask you if, if emotion is connected to, to illness. And, and, and yeah. you kind of agree. I do, in my own In your own way. But it's a way. very interesting perspective on that. Yeah. Okay, so you're out of school. You're yeah. working. Um, tell me about like how you feel when you're... You began to tell me about maybe satisfaction, the way you feel when you're helping people and you get that feedback. Like, is that what drives? You I to... love helping people. Yeah. But I've pulled over on the side of the road, help people change tires. I've mm. helped classmates who don't know anything about cars. I, I like helping. I, I think that's one of the love languages, right? That's acts of service or kindness or whatever it is. So I like helping and helping people understand the complexities of the body, it, it like, I don't want to say dumbing it down, but speaking to them at their terms. I think that's where I, I strive and I, I can shine in, in terms of helping people understand what's going on with them on a physiologic or a, a physical basis. Because how many doctors you've been to that just talk over your head? I'm the doctor in the room wearing a white coat. Take yeah. this, you'll be fine. 15 minutes, all right, next. Right. But if you take time with people and understand all of those things that you just listed and meet them where they're at and then explain to them what's going on, why it's going on, how we're going to fix it, the results will happen like that. 
Yeah, like you're considering everything. Everything. And you're really taking the time. Right. It's not just my foot hurts. Yeah. And you are like that. You know, I've gotten to know you and you really yeah. do take time. You know, and the conversations are real. Yeah. And that's not true for every every doctor, chiropractor, you know, practitioner. It's just not. No. You know, but so have you tied in any way the business degree or the business side of things? Like, has it been relevant in, in your experience so far? Or is that farther down the road? Um, both, right? I think it helps me analyze what we're doing in practice, how we're doing in practice, what we could be doing better. Um, not everybody thinks like that. You know, the, one of the things they say about doctors or chiropractors are terrible business people, <laughs> right? And that's true. And, and I, again, that'll be in the back of my head, like, okay, I'll prove you wrong. But y you can't argue math, right? I'm sure, you, I'm sure some mathematician out there that'll watch this or whatever will argue with me, but it, it, numbers are numbers. Y you have to be able to look at the numbers and make decisive decisions. This is working, this isn't working. I don't care about your emotions at this point. This is either working or it's not. It's not working, we need to change it. I've used it in that regard. Now, okay. your logistics of the office, I think looking at it from that perspective and looking at how the office can flow better, how many people we can schedule, how many of each modality we can schedule per hour to make sure we're maximizing our potential. Yeah, I definitely do that. Um, but my mind's always running with business. Like, I, I, like a lot of ideas, a lot of yeah. ideas. I I'm an idea guy, like a hundred percent an idea guy. And I don't have the means to execute them, but I could tell people who can help me execute them for sure. Um, I'm a part of a company right now that's a startup company and it was a patient of mine introduced me to the CEO. And we spoke on the phone for 10 minutes and he asked me to explain to him what was electrical muscle stimulation in layman's terms. And I explained it to him. It was this, this, and this, and it does this, this, and this. And then he asked me, he said, can we meet in person? Would you be willing to shoot and be a part of our team? I go, yeah, no big deal. So interesting. Uh, always looking for different ways, not only to make money, but to help people. And I, I'm trying to do that as much as I can. So my business mind is always running. Okay. Always. You ready for the question? Everybody ever, who ever has gone to a chiropractor need an adjustment? Yeah. Um, is, this, is, this, is this for real, right? I'm not asking that question, but there's people out there that we both know are like, I'm not going to go to a chiropractor. Well, this is not for real. Sure. Now, I'm a huge believer because I've been going to one since I was about 16, right? And I, so I do believe in what it does because I felt what it does. Sure. Um, what is it that you would say to, to, some, to anybody out there who's, got, who's maybe suffering from a variety of different things? Um, your perspective on, look, there's, there's the medical doctor approach as far as whatever the book says, do this, this, and this, but then there's like the chiropractic approach, yeah. which can do something very different, to be open-minded to it. So it's a complex question, right? You have to be able to, like with animal chiropractic, right? They teach us to stay in our lane. You're the chiropractor, you're not the vet. Know the difference. Got it. I'm gonna adjust the horse, you're gonna do everything else. Understood. In chiropractic and humans, it is such a robust, you have the ability to do anything, right? You can talk about the mind-body connection. You can work on pregnant moms and kids. You can work on high-end athletes. You can work on functional medicine. You can work on the brain. And, and because of the robustness of our practice, I think that scares that medical community because we do so much and and look i'll catch some grief for that and i don't really care but that's because they're closed-minded and there's only one way to practice in them and it causes them to question their own beliefs like what if what if it's not just this what if it's oh it could be other things right 
But you also have to you also have to look at it from their side of the perspective too. Like we have to stay in our lane. I am not going to change your medications. I am not going to tell you you need to come off of blood pressure medications. That is their job, right? But what I will tell you is that exercise and diet are a pretty much a cure all for a lot of things, but mainly uh, type two diabetes and heart disease and obesity, right? But if you exercise, it, it, I'll take it back further. I have a top five in my office. I think you may have seen it on my whiteboard, but it's the top five things a human needs to survive. Number one is a good breathing practice, making sure you're getting peak oxygen, you know, volume in your lungs so that your, your organs and your cells function properly. Number two, drink enough water. Number three. Hold on, pick up that jug. Where's that jug you got? Uh, I know, I've never seen a jug that big. <laughs> oh, it's only a half You're gallon. drinking two of those a day, right? It's two and a half. <laughs> it's crazy. Two, two and a half, yeah. <laughs> but, and that's why, right? Because the second thing is drink at least half of your body weight in ounces of yeah. water. A, ha- a gallon of water is half my body weight. There we go. Pretty easy math for me. But so air, water, good diet, good supplementation. Number four is movement. You got to move between 30 minutes and an hour a day minimum. That's not just walking around at your job. That's that's exercising. That is with your heart. That is stretch, you know, stressing your muscles, your joints. And then the last thing is sleeping, sleeping six to eight hours. So important. That is probably the most crucial thing Mm -hmm. that we need to do to to recharge as a human. But if we're not doing all of these things, we're not going to get good sleep. And then that that cyclical process is just going to drain us. That's optimal health. It is right. And sleep is underrated. Very much so. Most important thing. Very much so. And to go back to the the chiropractor, medical doctor, sickness, wellness question, staying in your lane and understanding how to navigate that without stepping on toes and getting people to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it helps the patient more than just saying, hey, come to me, I can cure your cancer. Hey, come to me, I can get rid of your headaches without that neurologist and that stupid medication. Like you have to be able to say, okay, watch this, right? We're gonna that's, we're gonna <clears> fix <throat> this, this, and this, and it's going to help yeah. with this, this, and this. That's that's more than just adjusting people. Yeah. So you're saying like, your approach is all of those things you just listed of course. for somebody that's open to it, which is more of like total health conversation. Is the right word holistic? Is that like a holistic approach? Is that what? I hear that term. As a whole. Yeah, yeah, as a yes. whole, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so that approach is going to bring health and might solve some problems that they're going to a regular uh, you know, MD for, for something for blood pressure. But Let, they're not looking at the root cause. They're just looking to give you a pill. Let's talk about what, what's going on in our world right now. Talk about it. The CDC came out and said 75% of the coronavirus deaths, yeah. the people who died from coronavirus had four or more comorbidities, heart disease, Predilection to stroke, obesity, diabetes, yeah. cancer, immunocompromised, whatever those four are. If, if we talked about working out, eating well, drinking water, moving, sleeping, if we had that simple conversation with America, which is the fattest country in the world, we probably would have had less people die of coronavirus. I think it, there's no question about that. I don't either. I don't need a medical and background. That's common sense, right? And you, you have a different perspective that, even. Which is, you would think that that's common sense, but this day and age, common sense has gone out the window. What do they say? Common it, sense ain't so common? Exactly. <laughs> right? So I, I, I'm, I'm a big proponent of that. Big. You know, it's, uh, well, we can go on and on about I, sure. I have I have opinions on that that, right. that are similar to yours. Sure. But... I think suffice it to say, if we're if we're healthy, yep. and you counted off a lot of good things, and if you just live that lifestyle, yep. um, you may get sick, you may get COVID, you may get anything, you may get the flu, yep. but your ability to process that and for your body to naturally heal through that, your risk is what probably way lower of any right. major problem happening. You'll get through it, yep. but not if you're obese, not if you have diabetes, and it's just that's a no brainer. Yeah. People come to you and they get to hear you give them guidance on not just, oh, yeah, let me give you an adjustment. 
right? Just a conversation. And you say, it, that's, it, I think, a really important distinction that you're making. It, it, you, and and maybe it's just your approach. It, it might just be my approach, but you can't negate the adjustment, right? The, the adjustment itself stimulates the nervous system and wakes it up, right? At that level. I'm stimulating mechanoreceptors. I'm stimulating the local nerves and then firing information up to that brain to say, hey, this joint is moving now. Mm, it's yeah. not stuck. So it works. And you can use that like some of these functional neurologists, like the one I work for now, uses that to stimulate parts of the brain to help it regenerate, to help mm. it communicate. So it, it, it's a very, very robust way to treat people. You can feel it like immediately. You know, when I get an adjustment, and like I said, I've been going since I was like 16, I'm 49 now. Yeah. It's almost addictive to me because when you get that adjustment and it's like, boom, like I feel good, but now I feel really good. Yeah. And it's like, it's like immediate. It, yep. It's hard to even explain. It's like a euphoric feeling. At least that's what happens to me. Yeah. You know? Um, so allergies too. Like I know that um, I had bad allergies when I was living up in Jersey. And when I began going to a chiropractor on a regular basis, um, they went down in severity by like 80%. And I didn't change anything else. And I suffered like really bad with allergies, really suffered. And they almost went away. Yeah. How do you explain it? The yeah. only difference was I had chiropractor in my life. So I mean, I'm, I'm a proponent, obviously, of... of uh, I live by the, the KISS mantra. You know that one, right? Keep, keep it simple, it. stupid? Yep. <laughs> I, I know it. Why would you start taking allergy medicine? Why would you start taking shots monthly yeah. if what you could do is something for a month to six weeks, try supplementing local honey with bees within 40 miles of where you live? Why Why wouldn't we try that? Why well, is tell that? Tell me about that. Um, so, you know, here in South Florida, there's plenty of local honey and orange blossom and <clears throat> South Florida has its own humidity and right. uh, allergen problem. But bees are pollinators, so they fly and they, they'll get all of that pollen and then they go back and make honey out of it. So what you're doing is you're introducing it through your gut into your immune system to build up the natural antibodies to oh, the pollen. Man, interesting. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Why? And there's good results on that. The great results. That's actually how I got over all of my allergies in Texas when I moved there. I learned that concept. My allergies were terrible. I was taking Zyrtec and Allegra every single day, both of them. I can relate. And it yeah. didn't do a damn thing. No. And then this girl in my class said, hey, why don't you try this? And I said, can you explain that to me? And it made sense. And it worked. But if you go into the medical mindset, it's like, nah, that doesn't work. That's hocus pocus stuff. You need to take steroids and you need to take this and that. And that's what they're taught. It's not like, I mean, it's, right. it's, it's the program. It is. You know, um, what, what have you seen come in into your practice that like my allergy story where you've had people come in and there's some nagging issue. Nobody else can figure it out or, or fix it or there's no good outcome. And all of a sudden it's like, whoa. I feel so much better. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of that. Nothing comes to mind? I had a lady, she had cervical stenosis and lumbar Sorry. stenosis. So it's narrowing of the, the spinal canal and it can okay. cause pain in, in, in the lumbar spine. It causes people to lean forward because it opens up and takes pressure off the spine. So we did a bunch of, a bunch of treatment. I adjusted her, you know, I didn't, it wasn't too manual. It was a lot of instrument stuff and some of the table because she was in her 70s. And we did uh, some decompression and laser therapy on her and it worked very well for her. We did like 20 or 30 visits with her and she had a resolution of her symptoms. And she came in and she's like, oh, my neck was bugging me a little bit. Can you can you take a look at it? I was like, sure. And I, you know, looked at her neck and I took out the activator because I wasn't very like, I mean, I'm very confident with my hands, but like she was kind of frail. It's fragile, so, yeah, yeah. So I just, I, I adjusted her, just, I did like two clicks, click, click. And she's like, whoa, that was a lot. I'm like, okay, have a seat. That night she went home and her husband was sitting to her right. And he said, honey, can you pass me the remote? And she reached for it and went, oh. And 
two weeks later when she came back in and told me the story, I was like, did you hurt? Was that like an, did you hurt yourself again? She said, no, I haven't been able to hear out of that ear. I only had 30% hearing in this ear since the nineties. I was like, huh? So like 30 years. Yeah. Like 30 years of 30% hearing in this ear, 70% loss. And she said, and I thought it was bullshit. So I went to my ENT and they tested it. And now I have 70% hearing in this ear. And I said, what did you do? She goes, you adjusted me. And I was like, that's pretty wild. I was that, like, so that, that, that that's happened. a good story. I said that happened wow. that night. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. She said, he was sitting to my right and I usually have to turn and say, huh? And I heard him and I grabbed the remote and I froze. I'm glad you shared that. That's powerful. Yeah. That's, that's a good that's story. A cool story. It's a very yeah. cool story. Okay. Now let's talk about the horses. Let's get into it. Uh, I mean, where do we go? So what, so, so how did you get into it? What is it? Like, you know, like I said earlier, I, I've always been one for the outdoors. Uh, I like being outside growing up in like rural Palm Beach County, you know, watching TV, watching Westerns, having friends whose dads are cowboys and have horses and cows. You all, I always wanted a farm. I, I still want to build a farm and have cows and horses and working towards it. You're in a good location. Great this location. Perfect. Um, but I've always been drawn to them. I, they are powerful. They are beautiful. They're pristine, dangerous. There's just this whole encompassing thing. And about a very them. gentle energy. A very, very sensitive and gentle. Super energy, sensitive. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So. In chiropractic school, in our last year, we could have, I could have taken this animal chiropractic program, but I just couldn't afford it. And I had a lot of friends who did it and then they did nothing with it. Some of them do it for yeah. fun. Some of them do it on the side. Some of them just do it yeah. just to say they did it. And, um, we were at a Super Bowl party, I think last year. And my girlfriend introduced us, introduced me to some people and we were at their house and their friend was there and he's like, man, I thought I was hoping I'd see you here. I was like, why? Oh, you only guess you want me to adjust you. And he's like, <laughs> and he, said, he said, no, I had my daughter's horse adjusted or my son's horse adjusted the other day. He goes, it's the coolest thing ever. I said, man, you know, I've been talking about doing, going back and doing that for two years. I said, it's just, very time consuming. It's like 200 extra credit hours that you got to take. Oh, wow. I had to fly to Dallas one weekend a month, take a Friday off of work, start class on Friday and be done by Sunday at four. It was like 40 hours a weekend. Did you guys go out to months. ranches and, and like so we practice? Out, like, yeah. So the Sunday we would go out to a, an equine facility where they would have, you know, people come out and ride and train and they had a bunch of barns that they had horses at and a uh, beautiful facility. And, um, my girlfriend, she looked at me and she said, just do it. I said, that means I'm going to be gone one weekend a month on top of what I already do for hunting and stuff. Are you okay with that? And she said, yeah, because this is what you need to do. I said, all right. And I just sucked it up and paid for it and did it. Wow. And that's very supportive by the way. Oh, she's great. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. So I, I, I wouldn't have done it without her. I still probably would be thinking about it. So you went, you, you, so you did it. You went through the course. I went through the course. I started in March of 21 and finished in July. I got, I took a national certification test. Um, is it more than like a typical one? Are there different levels of tests? Uh, for, for the American Veterinary Chiropractic Association. So the ABCA okay. is a nationally recognized. Um, okay. So that's like, the one. Yeah. It's that one in the IVCA. So international and American. So. Uh, they're the two accrediting body bodies. Some states require for you to practice that you have that. Um, Florida doesn't yet, and I think they're moving that way. Um, but I, I think we're a little ways off in that. But um, I went through and got accredited and took the took the test, passed the test, and it was such a great experience. I, uh, like I said earlier, I don't I don't go through life to meet people and say see you later. I'm on with my life. Like I keep in touch with. Uh, a vet 
in Hilton Head, South Carolina. Um, chiropractors in uh, Kansas, Wichita, uh, Missouri, vets all over the place. Because when you're doing this in animal chiropractic, you can either be a vet or a human chiropractor. That's it. You can't just be someone who wants to go and be a vet tech that adjusts the horses. People trying to do that. Yeah, it's yeah. Not legal, but um, so it, it was such a great community of people to be with and to learn from and to have that access and go, hey, I adjusted this horse. She's still acting like this. Do you think I should tell the vet this, this, and this? They're like, yes. Okay. Am I wrong for saying this? No. Interesting. Yeah. So you got you got it. You got yep. through it. And got now you now you're doing it. And now I'm doing it. And it's freaking awesome. I honestly love it. Mainly because I don't have to deal with people. And there's a headache with people that at the end of the day I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm irritable, and I just and oh, you gotta be on. Uh, you gotta be on mentally and physically. Mm. Right? And with horses, there's no communication. It's you're witnessing it. You're watching them. Yeah. You're watching their reactions. You're listening to them. But they bite you. People uh, they, don't bite. Uh, people don't bite. <laughs> people kick. They kick. But horses kick too. So have you had anything like with a horse where the horse gets irritated and it? it yeah. So two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I don't remember. Before Christmas, after Christmas, I don't remember what it was. I had a horse that I've tried to adjust twice. She's in a lot of pain. She did not want to do anything. Wouldn't even let me pass her front shoulder without turning to try to kick me. And the owner's like, wow. yeah, she doesn't really do that to anybody. So just be careful. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I got my eyes on her. Don't worry. And I couldn't even run my hand on her back without her like turning. So I said, hey, I think we might need to call a vet out here and tag team this horse. So the vet came out and it's not the preferred method but the vet sedated the horse we gave her like half a dose see how she responded and then um she was still a little irritable so we gave her the second half of the dose and by then she was calm and we were able to actually get her adjusted was the vet apprehensive Not about what bit. you were doing that vet's actually referred me multiple patients interesting yeah hey you need to call this guy your horse is stiff let him adjust your horse so you see immediate like how do you get the feedback from the animal so Unlike you. Oh, that feels great. Exactly. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Oh God, I feel like a million bucks. The horse responds based on its nervous system. Like, so you're putting input into that and it's got to go from the tail all the way back up to the head. And it takes 40 seconds, a minute to process. And then they'll give you a shake. They'll lick their lips. They'll bite. They'll wag their tail. They'll turn around and like nudge you and thank you. It's, it's 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 a different form of gratification. It's did you get trained to identify that that's the way that they give you their feedback, or did you just bit, know from a little bit being and, around horses? And actually, the best feedback you get is when uh, last week I worked on a horse, and um, the one that vet referred me, and the owner owner said, "Oh my god, we haven't been able to t even touch her there." Oh my God, she likes that. She likes you. Like that's good feedback too. When someone who's been around that horse for 10 years is telling you all of that feedback, excuse me, it's, it's incredible. Where are you going to go with it? Oh man. What are your aspirations with, with that? Like any business, I want to grow it. Right. I don't, I don't want to do it for fun. Um, so, you do love it though. I can, your face lit up like the second you, you, Oh yeah. like your energy changed immediately. I adjusted my dog this morning, my girlfriend's dog this morning. She yeah. was, she, every morning I jump, she jumps up and she'll scratch when I'm giving her her food. She was like half jumping. I know, what's wrong? What's wrong, mama? Come here. I went pop and she yelped and then she was able to walk away and came over and she was jumping up on me again with her food. So yeah, I love it, man. I love animals. I love it. I'd like to go adjust everything in the Palm Beach Zoo if I could. <laughs> Right? Lion Country Safari, take me out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll do whatever. You can go on that giraffe platform like, right. where they poke their heads in. Yeah, and adjust something that's <laughs> this big. You A know? little think, oh, wow. But, uh, you know, 
throughout life, I have never known where life's going to take me. I didn't know I'd be filming a podcast, right? But I just go, go along with it. Wherever it takes me, I'm the same person I am every single day. I'm nice, I'm courteous, I'm respectful. Unless you piss me off, then I'll let you know how it is. But uh, I'm there to help. I'm there to help people. I'm there to help their animals. And wherever that takes me, it takes me. Hopefully, it takes me to some success. Okay. I think that brings it full circle. I think so. Tell me about the tattoo. Oh, the tattoo. Uh, <laughs> so when I got back into the University of Florida, it's when did I get this? It's probably 12 years old now. I got to get it touched up. But I got uh, told myself I'd get a tattoo when I got in. That so keeps I got, on going. I got two alligators yeah. in a swamp. Yeah. Used to have a lot more color. But yeah. What so does it mean? Just. It was just my thing that I wanted to have like a, yeah. a swamp scene when I got back into University of Florida and yeah. became a gator officially. Ah, okay. There you go. Well, we got mind body connection, emotions, animals, work ethic. Don't be helpless. Yeah. Teamwork. I mean, it's like it all keeps coming back up you know, throughout your life. Yeah. And um, I think that at the end of the day, there's probably a core message that you having lived this life, having done all these things, probably can share with us. And I put you on the spot. You put say, me on the spot. And I said, you, if you could say to, um, you're a young guy, but if you can turn back, call it 10 years from now and talk to the 25 year old version of you, what advice would you give yourself? What advice would I have give Have you learned myself? a bunch of lessons? Be calm, be kind, and be patient. That is awesome. Yeah. Now, I want you to look into that camera. That camera. And I want you to, to share with everybody how they can reach you and whatever you want to share. You know? Yeah. Um, like I just said, be a good person. Be kind. Be patient. Be helpful. It'll get you, it'll get you far in life. And it'll, it'll introduce you to, to some great people. <laughs> and... Uh, you guys can find me at championanimalchiropractic.com, Champion Animal Cairo on Instagram. Uh, I believe it's the same thing on Facebook. Okay. Uh, Doc, D O C Safransky on Instagram. That's where you okay. see all my human stuff. And we're going to put everything down below. Yep. So uh, people that are watching can go down there and they can click on all your stuff and they can reach you. Uh, man, really cool. Thanks, man. I, I appreciate you doing this. That was really, really cool.